Hey YouTube, I'm back with another video update on the uh, PCIe x 8 issue where it's running at that for the video card. Uh, the word I got from the HP Omen team, I spoke to Zach over there on the team and he explained to me that it has to do with the PCIe lanes uh, sharing them and it's a limitation of the board itself, the motherboard. So it seems like HP went with, uh, I'm thinking it's more or less the board, and they just put both of those slots running at the times 8. I asked a fellow uh, YouTuber about it as well, and theirs reported running at times 8. I contacted a few more people, theirs is running at times 8, so apparently this is normal and expected. Um, is it going to bottleneck anything? We discussed that uh, with Zach uh, from the Elman team. Um, he said you're looking at, you know, maybe 1% at the most right now. And I asked him, I said, well, well, what about the future? You know, as cards get faster, maybe like the next gen cards, is, is this going to be an issue? And he wouldn't say yay and he wouldn't say nay. I, I'm not sure. We both do not know. So, I guess we're just going to have to see and, you know, wait. I, I personally don't think it'll be a problem. I think we have a ways to go, you know, still, even at times 8, that's a lot of bandwidth, you know, still. I don't think, you know, it's going to be a problem. Um, so, I just wanted to let people know about that. So, if you're seeing your card running at times 8, you know, HP says, you know, HP Elman team, they say that's normal. And it's expected instead of running at the time 16. So, um, I'd like to move on to overclocking, which I notice other YouTubers, I don't think I've ever seen any overclocking videos on the Elman desktop on YouTube. No one touches that subject, I notice, with reviewers. And, you know, people, you know, that are sponsored when they, you know, when HP sends them units, nobody talks about overclocking their units. It's like a unicorn or something. So, I'm going to be talking about that today with this system. So, I'll just tell you right out of the gate, my max overclock is 4.6 gigahertz. That's as good as you're going to get. And the reason why, well, at least on my machine, and I'm sure it's going to be the others as well. Now, the Omen Command Center, it does have a voltage slider, you know, where you can adjust the voltage. That's just like a placebo. It, it's not going to do anything at all. It's just there. I mean, I've, I've tried to adjust it, and, you know, it doesn't make a difference with the voltage. HP has the voltage locked down to where they want to put it. And the reason why, I was hoping it would at least run at 4.7 holding all the cores. And no, it's not It's not doing that. It's only going to hold at 4.6. Here's the reason. It won't even hold at 4.7. Because if you look over here at... I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm holding my iPod, so it's a little shaky. They set uh, the CPU power limits in the BIOS to 135, and for the short duration, it's 168 watts. So the long duration, it's going to stay... Now, when I done 4.6, it stays in between 135 watts and 136. It'll stay locked on all cores at 4.6. As soon as you move it to 4.7... That's where the cores, they will fluctuate, and they will not stay all at 4.7. You'll see some drop at 4.5, 4.6. It starts out at 4.7, but there's drops on the cores. And you don't want that. You want them to stay consistently, you know, all even and, and no dropping. So I'm going to give you guys an example here. So I have Cinebitch, <laughs> Cinebitch, sorry. Cinebench open right now, and what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to open Command Center. Just give me a moment here. Uh, where are you? Command Center. Okay. There's the HP Omen Command Center. Um, I haven't messed with the processor cache ratio. I don't care about that. I know some people like to mess around with that. I'm not even sure if that changes anything. I have not touched it. But I also noticed during the, the uh, tutorial, um, they they want you to adjust the core ratio. They they don't guide you towards core voltage or the processor cache ratio. They mainly walk you towards just the processor core ratio. So here's what we're going to do. So it's at 4.3 and I actually need to open up CPU Z here if we can watch the cores. So let me open this here real quick. So okay so I'm gonna because I already know this machine it it can overclock up to 4.6 gigahertz so we're gonna move it at 46 so and that's on all the cores 4.6 so we're gonna apply it and now we're going to run the Cinebench and if you notice um, right here on hardware monitor I'm sorry it's up there it's gonna show the, the package power the wattage so that's what you want to pay attention to when you do this you'll you'll see the wattage hang around at 135 or so 136 and I'm gonna try um, I'm gonna try to put it together with uh, CPU Z here where you can see it's kind of hard because I'm holding this camera. I'll try my best and see if I can get it in closer. I'm sorry for all the shaky camera work here. So all the cores will stay. I'm going to hit, you know, to run the test. And they'll all stay at 46. Here we go. I'm going to hit it. So they're all at 46, and then there's the package power up there. It's hitting about 130 watts or so, 129, and it's still holding at 46. As you can see, all the cores are holding. Still holding at 46, all of them. So okay, it finished. So now if you go back into Omen and you try to push it faster, you know, 4.7. Sorry. Okay. So 47. We're going to hit apply. And we'll run the Cinebench uh benchmark again. I don't mess with the voltages because I've tried it. It doesn't do anything. It's just there and it it does absolutely nothing. It's totally pointless. HP locked the voltage up. So it's going to it's going to do, you know, whatever HP set it to um dynamically. So okay, it's at 47. It's on all cores 47. And this is where you're going to notice the cores are going to jump during this test. They will not all hold the whole time at 4.7 gigahertz you'll see so as soon as I hit to uh, run the, uh, run the test you'll see it bounce around okay here we go see it's already 45 I've seen it go down to 45 see there's a core going down to 45 45 45 right now. It's not holding at 47 the whole time. It comes close. But you we uh, uh but you will see some drop off. 
So you can push it at 4.7 if you want, but it's not going to be a solid 4.7. If you want the cores all to be solid, you know, the speed, it, uh, you want to clock it to 4.6, at least on my machine. So it could vary from machine to machine. Now the other thing, when you do this, and I'm going to demo it real quick. This is normal. So, okay, you you locked in your overclock. Okay. So let me close everything out here. Now when you go to restart, the system's going to shut down, and it's not going to shut down, you know, like a normal restart. The system actually shuts down, and then it boots up again, as you'll see right here. It's almost restarting. Okay, now it's going to shut down. There it goes. And then it's going to come back up. It has to do with between Windows 10, how it works, and the, the BIOS motherboard, how it's making changes and whatnot with the overclock. And it's going to do that every single time you restart or when you shut down your computer and boot it back up again. It's going to do that same process. And that's normal. So don't worry about that. And the other thing, let me get in here if I can show you real quick. When you go to the Omen Command Center and you want to restore it back to default, what you're going to do is you're going to hit once this loads up, okay, you're going to go to the overclocking tab and you're going to hit restore default. Hit apply. And then close. So next you go to restart. And it's going to do that thing again that I was talking about, how it restarts and shuts down. The thing is with this, when you go back to defaults, you want to restart the computer twice and let it go through the motions with this, with these shutdowns twice. Because if you don't do it, it's not going to restore properly. I found that out, the settings. So it's doing it now. And then we'll let Windows load back up. Okay, we're in the login screen, so I'm going to go and restart it again. And it's going to go through that boot process again, where it shuts down and fires back up. There it goes. Okay, now it's clear and it won't do that anymore after you do that. It's completely restored to the factory settings. I don't know why it does that. It took me a while to figure it out, like, hey, what's going on? Because after the first reboot, it was, you know, the, I noticed the defaults weren't working right. So when I done the two reboots in a row, everything was fine. So um, I'm thinking about making another video. I got to cut this one off because I'm coming up on the 15 minute limit and I didn't want to make it too long. But if I miss anything or you guys have any questions about what I said or you want some more info on this, you know, in case I miss something, I'll watch the video myself again and make sure that hopefully I covered everything. But um, until then, thanks again for watching and I appreciate it. And if you liked it, you know what to do. And I'll see you next time. Thanks again. Bye.